What's up, nerd amigos? I'm the Drive Talker Nerd, John Norgrove, and this is Nerd Jive. Uh, I know I've been off the last couple of days, but uh, last couple of video uploads, I should be, uh, should say. But um, just wasn't feeling really good, kind of out of it. Had to take some time off of work, so decided to take time off of this. I mean, I almost did one on Monday, and then was like, no, I don't want it, so I didn't. But um, yeah, let's get started with the Wednesday's news. So first up. Some kind of cool astrological news about the Centauri system. So the Centauri system is made up of Proxima Centauri, Alpha Centauri A, Alpha Centauri B, uh, Alpha Centauri A and B are a binary system. Uh, and it's the closest star system to us, as well as the three closest stars to us. Now, uh, Proxima Centauri orbits Centauri A and B. We did, so we had always believed that this was the case, right? Uh, when you look at like uh, like a uh, red shift from the light from the stars and their distance away from us and like uh, the shifting the the gravity red shifting that happens because they move closer and further away from us they were always sort of like in alignment so we have always assumed it but we've never known it with an absolute certainty and you know plus or minus uh, 0.25 of a light year is a sh is like a really huge amount of space you know one of those kind of things uh, but so what we were able to do was was we were able to detect movement in Proxima Centauri and calculate its orbital velocity so at the velocity that it's moving it's orbital velocity would be below the threshold where it would be able to escape from the binary system Centauri A and Centauri B. All right, which and so what that means is that assuming that we calculated the velocity correctly, you know, um, it is in a gravitational lock, so it cannot escape from Centauri A and Centauri B, which essentially proves what that is. This also means that it's not a binary system, but a trinary system. Uh, uh, Proxima Centauri orbits Alpha Centauri A and B by 2.7 trillion kilometers, with a period of orbit, or time in which it takes to complete one singular orbit, of 590,000 years. It is only just in gravitational lock, but that's pretty interesting. And one of the more important pieces of interesting information about this is that um, <clears throat> uh, Proxima Centauri has a planet orbiting it. Now, the Proxima Centauri is orders of magnitude smaller than our sun, but the planet is orbiting technically close enough that we think mayhaps or mayhaps not, it could possibly contain light, uh, life, but um, it's it's kind of like if we're gonna leave our solar system and move to an and go to another planet the first planet's probably gonna be that one it's kind of like the closest non-orbiting our sun sort of planet um so this is i mean it's pretty interesting information uh there's a link there's a, a blaster article below that's absolutely amazing so next up, some Nintendo news. So if you didn't know, and I didn't literally until today, the NES Classic, which is the tiny mini NES that came with like 30 games, is completely discontinued, which I think is kind of bullshit because uh, there's still demand for it. Uh, I guess what had happened was they had made plans to produce a, a, a set number. We're going to call it a million units, right? Uh, they sent them out. They sold super fast, so they produced another run of them, million units, which is already twice as much as they expected to produce. And there's still that demand and they're just kind of like, we don't want to focus on it. So that's being shut down. The NES Classic's out of business. I don't have one yet. So if you have one, give it to me. I don't, <laughs> I like, I was looking online today and people are asking like $300 for these things. They were $35 MSRP. This is like seriously insane. You know what I mean? But, um, <clears throat> So that's NES Classic News. Now, uh, Eurogamer, which is, uh, like, they're the ones that cracked the, uh, the Switch. Oh, it's gonna be a modular console that can plug into the TV or unplug and be mobile, and the, and the handles are gonna come off. They predicted all of that shit, like, before it was announced, right? So, <clears throat> what they are t saying is that an SNES Mini is in the works, which is awesome. All right, so... Just like the regular Nintendo Mini, right? They're gonna make one for Super Nintendo, which I grew up with Super Nintendo. I love Super Nintendo dearly. Um, that's that's awesome news. I like. I really hope that, that, that that's right. I would super want one. It makes sense, sort of, to do that. Um, it's just gonna be one of those things where it's like, 
are they gonna make you know this tiny ass number of units and it's impossible to get it just like if Nint like i don't understand i don't understand what nintendo's trying to do like i get oh we're gonna do this snes you know what keep producing the regular one the, the NES Classic, and then produce the SNES and put it out there, and people are gonna either buy because at the price point that they were selling them at, it kind of doesn't matter. People are either gonna buy both, or sales are gonna drop of the NES Classic and rise for the SNES, and then you discontinue that one because sales drop, like a like the way a business runs. Like it just it, it it's completely absurd. I don't know why Nintendo's doing it, but whatever. Um, next up is. Toyota is testing hydrogen fuel cell semis, right? So they're testing them down to the Port of Los Angeles, and this is kind of cool. What they're getting is 200 miles per fill-up, all right, uh, with a combined gross weight capacity of 80,000 pounds. And so they're just they're trying to figure out, like, can we do it? Is it going to work? You know, this kind of thing. Um, and it's all part of this larger sort of scheme plan uh, project of Toyotas to start building a hydrogen infrastructure uh, for fuel cell vehicles. So what, what they want to do is they want to be able to sell hydrogen fuel cell cars. And in all reality, like it makes sense. They're way more fuel efficient and, and there's less bad things, even though technically the emissions from it would be steam, which is water, which is a more dangerous greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. You know, there's a lot of minutiae in there, but I think it's a good idea. The more options we have, the more competition these companies need to make. If the oil companies want to, you know, want to stay competitive and, and car companies want to stay competitive, they're going to need to adapt to, uh, you know, changing uh, consumer need for fuel efficiency, uh, people moving over to electric, people moving over to hydrogen. I mean, that's kind of, you know, it's sort of where we want it to go. Diversification within the industry and diversity within the industry is only going to make it more powerful and better. Um, so, like, Good luck, Toyota. I guess they've been running this test for a while and it seems to be working out pretty well. So maybe between this and uh, uh, what is that, self-driving semis that whatever company is working on that, like maybe that's maybe that's where shipping goes. It would cut costs for us, which would make me happy. I order like 80% of shit online. It's easier. Um, <clears throat> so next up is uh, interesting Kickstarter news, right? So Kickstarter is looking for new groundbreaking innovative ideas to be brought up on Kickstarter, of course, because they make money off of this stuff. But what they're specifically specifically asking for is, is big, grand things to start on Kickstarter. Uh, light, the light sale is a good example. Uh, like the Oculus is a good example. These like huge bloody things, right? Um, so their teams are focusing they're, they're, they're refocusing their teams towards uh, like big game changing kind of um, uh, kicks, kick, kick starts, whatever the hell they call an individual unit of Kickstarter. I don't, I, I don't know what those are called. Startups. No. Kickstarts? Campaigns. Campaigns? campaigns. campaigns. I think it's campaigns. I don't. Wow, I don't know what those are called now that I think about it. Uh, and I've, I've put a ton of money into Kickstarter. Oof, whatever. Um. But yeah, so, uh, you know, whatever. It, it makes sense. I think things are going to move towards crowdfunding in general. I mean, geez, look at so many YouTubers are using whatever that, like, weird monthly donation subscription thing is that YouTube does. I don't, I don't understand, what is it called? Patreon. I don't understand how it works or what it does. I mean, like, I get it, but it's weird. Um, <clears throat> so, like, real last news it was this really end of the day thing. Uh, like I was, I just clocked out for work. Um, and my buddy was like cloak and dagger trailer, check it out. And it was, it was amazing. <clears throat> so, um, the Marvel is producing like a street level, like gritty looking cloak and dagger trailer. And it looks, it just lo it looks amazing. Um, I think it's on free form. Um, somebody told me it might be on ABC, so it's on one of those channels, uh, but the trailer's on YouTube, look it up, I'm like, it looks amazing, um, they're doing them real young, like, uh, teenage, uh, and it's re it's like, it's real street level, real gritty, like, street fights and all this kind of stuff, which I think fits the character as well, as well as, I, like, I think that Marvel does a good job with that, because it's, it's easy to kind of, like, low-key 
the powers a little bit to kind of make it a little bit more uh, understandable for main uh, primary audiences. But yeah, absolutely, absolutely fantastic trailer. Check it out below, as well as anything I've talked about today. Check it out below. Um, <clears throat> like, comment, subscribe, uh, share this stuff. Like. Hit the little share button and then go to Facebook and, and post it to all of your people because I'm up and coming. I'm still, you know, trying to make moves and the more subscribers I have, the better, you know, the, the, the more benefits I get through YouTube and other stuff like that that allows me to do, you know, things like live streams and all this kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, please share this. Uh, but again, uh, like, subscribe if, you, if you're not subscribed and you enjoyed it. Check out the other content I have. I mean, the, uh, you know, we've got some wife drive stuff. We've got some drunk anime stuff. It's all good. So check that out. Uh, but either way, I've been John Norgrove. This has been Nerd Jive. Stay nerdy, guys.